welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today we're talking about esports and Hollywood. With me are siblings, Optin Studios founders and producers, Jay Moses and Kim Moses. Jay is joining us from New York and has made his name as a producer of Grand Theft Auto and has spent many years in the tech space. Kim is joining us from LA and is known for her work on Ghost Whisperer, Reckless, and producing premium content. Welcome, Jay and Kim. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. All right. So, um, so I guess the big question: Does Hollywood um, look at esports as an opportunity, Jay? Yeah, I think Hollywood is trying to figure it out. Um, I think I think uh, what what we what we have found um, is that Hollywood is beginning to understand that, that this is a big market and that this is a real sport and a really engaged audience. Um, but I would say their understanding of the game business and their understanding of technology is somewhat limited. Um, so it's going to be uh, a bit of a curve to get there. All right, what do you think about that, Kim? Yeah, I agree with Jay. And, you know, uh, I just want to tell the audience that we're siblings <laughs> and we have Optian Studios is our, our production company. And we discovered, you know, this really the response to Hollywood when Jay and I took a project out um, to the community and met with agents and managers and, you know, strategic partners and talked about this project, which was about the world of esports, a scripted show, because there were no scripted shows. And Jay can tell you how the project came about. But when we took it out to, to you know, find uh, an alliance, we got a lot of pushback initially um, because people don't understand uh, esports as deeply as the video game community, which is very different from Hollywood, even though it's much more successful and much more pros prosperous. So, Jay, do you want to talk a little bit about coming to me with the, your idea of uh, starting this business? Yeah, sure. So, I, I've been in the game business for since 1992, so a very long time, and I've been very involved in esports. And about a year ago, I approached Kim, and I said, look, there's this really robust space that um, really has not been um, sort of addressed by Hollywood from a scripted standpoint. There's a bunch of documentaries and reality things out there, but nothing scripted. Let's go out and try to sell this. Kim uh, knows everyone in Los Angeles and in Hollywood, so we were able to get meetings right away uh, pretty quickly. And we put together a presentation, and we went, went out start selling it to different people and discussing it. And as Kim said, we got pushback because people did not fully comprehend how big it was. And we put together this presentation with numbers in it, like how much money Ninja was making and how many colleges were offering um, full ride scholarships and how many hours were consumed on Twitch and, um, and just sort of things like that. And we really got a sort of a lot, a lot of very wide eyes in the room of like, you gotta be kidding me. Ninja's making X $50 million, $60 million a year. 90 colleges are, are doing esports, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, hundreds of billions of hours are being consumed on Twitch and YouTube. And they literally did not know those, those statistics. And uh, so we ultimately, I'll let Kim tell the story about how we ultimately sold this show to the CW Network. Yes, thanks, Jay. So how we sold the, the show to the CW Network is that I had worked with Mark Pedowitz, who's the president of the CW, when I did Ghost Whisper. He was the president of ABC Studios. And he was a wonderful boss um, and you know, just has always been a visionary in the industry. And so I went in for a general meeting with him at the CW uh, to catch up and Jay was in New York so he couldn't be with me. So I asked Jay if he would stand by, you know, so that I could tap him in uh, by phone if Mark showed any interest. And I took the deck with me on my iPad and I went in and Mark and I were talking about a couple of different things. And then I mentioned eSports and cause he's met Jay. Jay's been on the set of, um, of Ghost Whisper, of course. So uh, we talked a little bit about Jay's background. We talked about what I'm doing the merging of the two, which is what we're discussing today, is this intersection between Hollywood's, Hollywood and uh, esports and video games. And, uh, you know, he started to 
uh, go through the deck on my iPad and uh, I brought Jay into the uh, conversation by phone and the three of us discussed it. And because Mark has put um, the esports on the seed, which is the C the CW's uh, digital platform, he knew a lot about esports. He understand the branding, and he really what he was most interested in was who are the women in this world. And mm -hmm. so uh, Jay and he and I discussed what the show could be. Mark had some great ideas. He was able to help us figure out how the show could hook into the CW audience, which has Riverside, which is a huge hit for them. And a lot of the Greg Berlanti shows, which has a, a, a more of a female young demographic than male, but pretty balanced. And so Jay and I walked away, you know, with this commitment from Mark saying, if you can develop this for us, you know, and you can bring on a great writer, um, then we'll do this show. Uh, because it's perfect for our demographic. And the thing that's interesting about it is that the CW's digital platform, the Seed, is as robust as their act actual television platform. And that is somewhat unusual. It's either Netflix, which has a very strong digital platform, or you've got like the traditional networks like ABC that have a bigger viewing audience than a digital platform. But the CW sits in a sweet spot where both their digital platform and their TV platform have a, a very balanced, robust audience that goes back and forth. So that's perfect for us. So what can you tell us about that show? I know um, it's, you're limited. I think we can, we, we can talk about um, the writer uh, who is an extraordinary writer. Uh, her name is Daisy Gardner and she was the showrunner on Silicon Valley for the last two years of um, um, Silicon Valley, which of course, everybody loves Silicon Valley. And it was a perfect, it's a perfect fit with what we're doing. And the other is that uh, we have a third executive producer, her name is Debbie Liebling, who's an amazing uh, comedy kind of uh, just producer in general. And uh, we're, the, so it's the four of us who have been working on that show. Yeah, and so uh, we've developed with De uh, Debbie Liebling in the past, and Debbie has a big hit on Hulu right now, which is Pen15, and she also was the executive producer of South Park and the South Park feature films, and she's done an extraordinary number of things, um, you know, out in the industry and has also run studios. So we worked beautifully with her, and then Daisy, we hadn't worked with, but Debbie had worked with her before, and what's really interesting about Daisy is she didn't really know anything about the esports world, but she knew the value of it from working on Silicon Valley because of all the other, like uh, you know, gamers that she worked with. And so, as soon as we met with her, she said, "I'm in. I know how to do this show. I know what to do." But we had to take her into the world of esports, which was, you know, the tremendous value that Jay brings is his relationships and his knowledge and. You know, he's got a significant footprint in that world. So he was able to take Debbie and Daisy and me into that world and indoctrinate us. And we were laughing because we just had a, a note session with the CW on the script. They read the first draft of the script and it went really well, but they had a couple of notes. And after we got off the phone and we did a conference call with Debbie, Daisy uh, and Jay and I, we were all just like so impressed that Daisy had gone from knowing so little to being like a true expert right. <laughs> in that world. Right. And we, we started, we went to the World of Warcraft Championships at Poly Pavilion. Um, and that was kind of the indoctrination into mm -hmm. that watching a tournament. We also had a really a great dinner one evening at Kim's at the pool in, the, in Santa Monica where Kim lives. We had Jonathan was there, who I know was on your show recently. Uh, Fatality is a good friend of mine. And we had uh, Eric uh, Anderson from uh, FaZe Clan. And we have a bunch of women who are women gamers. They all came. And we just had uh, this great evening of talking about esports, what it is, how gamers think. Um, so Daisy really got the opportunity to get into the, into the brains of all these folks. Yeah. And since then, she speaks to them on a very regular basis. So, right. And then Jay I, also took us to, uh, um, 
took us to some of the training houses and we spent time with the teams and the managers and the coaches. And, you know, we spent time, we were embedded with an all girl team, which was so fascinating. And they were just fantastic uh, to get to know. And, um, you know, and then we went to uh, some other championships and tournaments and things. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really fascinating. And the thing that I think is most interesting is that this whole world exists and is prospering and growing exponentially, especially you know in the last eight months, that Hollywood and we had no idea existed. I had some sense of it because of Jay in the past, but nothing like what it really is. And you know, Hollywood has to really embrace the people who are engaged in um, esports and video games because that's the future of our industry. Do you think that there are barriers to esports um, and uh, intersecting with Hollywood? Yes, I, I, I do. I mean, Kim has in, incredible access to people in Hollywood, as does Debbie, as does Daisy. Without that, it's almost impossible for people from the game world or from the tech world or from the esports world to penetrate. Because it, 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 both of these businesses are similar in the, in the sense that they're both cottage industries, right? Hollywood is a cottage industry, primarily located in one town. And just about everybody who works in the, in the industry knows, it, knows another person. Esports is more or less the same. Games are very similar to that as well. But they're very different businesses. They're located in different places. They have a different flow to them. They have a different culture. And very few people actually intersect. Um, so in order to make this happen, right, I, as a person who comes from the game business or esports and technology, would need someone like Kim. I couldn't do it without Kim being the person uh, from Hollywood and Debbie and Daisy. So it's, it's, these are very separate businesses, very different cultures. They don't intersect naturally. You know, what are your thoughts on that, Kim? You know, I, I was just going to say it's absolutely true. We hadn't really, um, you know, used the word cottage industry, Jay, but I think that's a really good choice of words. And because you said that, I was thinking because uh, when we were doing our prep with Catherine, we had talked about, uh, you know, the differences, and I think we should run through them of, you know, the game business versus um, Hollywood, and. The fact that we're all located in Los Angeles, for the most part, there's a, you know, there are segments around the country, like in Oregon and, you know, New York and Chicago, but the main, the studios and the, um, you know, the platforms centers are all, even when Netflix set up, they didn't stay, you know, where they originally were, they set up a whole operation and now they own a studio in Hollywood. And I think it's more of a one-to-one -one kind of, uh, communication, relationship, physical relationship. We, uh, you know, speak more on the phone and we see each other before COVID hit, we were physically, you know, the way our business operated, we would go from building to building, studio to studio, meeting after meeting, running all over town. Everything was very physically connected. With Jay's business, you guys are all over the world. So when COVID hit, our business slammed shut because we couldn't you know, go into production. We couldn't stay in production, but also in development, it took a while for the industry to get back up on its feet, even to do development meetings through Zoom because nobody was used to operating that way where, where Jay's side of the, his industry never took a hit. In fact, probably prospered even more, even though it was international. And I think the reason you guys maybe aren't as physically connected is because it is an international business, even though it's a newer business. Well, right. it's, it's, it's so culturally different. And, and one of the things that um, is so different is the way people communicate, which is in the tech business, in the games business, for the most part, and esports, to maybe a little lesser degree, you rarely have conversations with people. It's almost all digital, right? And you're in Trello, you're in Slack, you're texting, you're emailing. Um, every once in a while, you'll get on a Zoom or a um, you know um, some other kind of way of hooking up. But for the most part, you're communicating through your keyboard. Um, the the entertainment business is talking. Um, there's a certain amount of 
digital transfer of information. But 90% of the time you're on phones, uh, Zooming with people, talking to people, schmoozing with people, all this kind of stuff. And it's just really different. Um, and it, it's taken me some time to get used to uh, communicating with. Uh, so that's another issue, right? So you have the kind of the two cottage businesses located in different places, but you also have two different uh, methods of communicating. But, um, you know, there's also a generational difference too. So Hollywood yeah. is much older and esports is much younger. What have you noticed uh, with that, Jay? Um, without, without a doubt, the game business is a younger business uh, and more digital. And the uh, Hollywood is definitely, I don't want to say an old business, but you know, it's, people tend to, to be a little older. They t tend to be a lot less facile with technology, which is, which is not a small issue, a big issue. The other thing I'll just point out is that a lot of the people in, in Hollywood have assistants, which is a very strange concept <laughs> in the game <laughs> business. I mean, I, I've been on the board of Take Two for 13 years, and I, you know, I deal with a lot of people like, who run game publishers and all these kinds of things. And generally speaking, they may have an assistant, but they don't really use their assistant. Hollywood is all about assistance. And that's, that's a whole different level of gatekeeping and getting through gates and all this kind of stuff. Uh, which of course, Kim is unbelievably good at sort of knowing how to navigate that world. And I'm kind of clueless on how to navigate that world. Thank <laughs> I know. <laughs> Hollywood is old. It's not necessarily about the age because we have a lot of young people, you know, in the industry. It's old school. And right. trying to, it's kind of like trying to turn the Titanic, honestly, um, mm -hmm. you know, in regards to tech. And Jay and I know people who are running like studios who, you know, can't even use a digital phone still. They have <laughs> assistants chase them around with faxes, if you can believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they print their emails, right? <laughs> yes, they, they print their emails. We know people in Hollywood who have their emails printed and then they respond and the assistant will go and type it. So these are very different worlds um, and they don't necessarily fit nicely together. Well, you know, what I thought was interesting is this email idea that, that if, if you're talking with someone in esports to say that you're going to email them, that may be something that they aren't used to. What do you think, Jay? No, it, it, that, that's part of this whole cultural thing, which is I never rarely ever use emails or get emails from companies, portfolio companies, people I'm working with. Um, the, the Hollywood is run by email. And that's pretty much it. I mean, some people use their personal texting, but tools, technology tools, they just, they just don't exist. The other thing I'll just point out is you have the role of agents in Hollywood, which is, you know, doesn't exist at all in the game business and in the esports business. I mean, they're starting to show up in the esports representing people. But the, this concept of having to deal with packaging and agents and all this kind of stuff, that's a whole, that's a very complex layer of, of things that Kim manages very well that I still just scratch my head about. I don't understand it. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see because, uh, you know, the whole infrastructure of Hollywood because of the digital, digital influence is, is starting to shift whether people want it to or not. And so there's a whole thing going on with the Writers Guild and the agencies where they're in a big uh, court battle about packaging and all the things that are involved in that. So right now, there are a lot of writers who do not have agents because the two top agencies, CAA and, um, and William Morris Endeavor, you know, aren't allowed to represent writers. On Jay's side of the business, you don't have, the agents are, and managers are starting to come into his business because the talent on his side of the business is starting to like make a lot of money. And it'll be interesting to see if agenting prospers on my side of the business continues to prosper, and if it prospers on Jay's side of the business or it, it doesn't get the traction that it did on my side. That, I think, is a big open question and we're watching it uh, actually evolve in real time. Yeah. So, so is there a difference between how things are made in Hollywood um, versus esports? Oh, it's gigantic. 
the, the difference. Um, I, I would say, first of all, from a time standpoint, right, things in Hollywood take forever. They move at glacial speeds. And uh, one of the big problems with that is when you move at glacial speed and then something changes, everything goes into what they call turnaround. Um, so it's, it's kind of, um, it's very volatile on the Hollywood side. The game side is much more, it will take a long time to create a game or to create something, but it's not dynamic. It's not changing every three or four months because some senior executive is moving. So that, that process is just very, very different, right? The idea of, of selling an idea, I, I get calls from people, mainly from the children of my friends, you know, who are now in college going, I have a great idea for a game. And I'm like, that's terrific, but it'll never get made, <laughs> right? Because the, the, the game business is really about technology, worlds, and engines, right? And it's not so much about a uh, storyline. Kim's business, and I'll let her talk about this because she's expert on it, is really about storyline and using a common technology to create that. Right. And I think that the challenge that Hollywood's facing is exactly what Jay just described, that, you know, this, our, our process is more dynamic. It's constantly changing. And so my business is a house of cards. You pull one card out in the middle and, you know, the whole project collapses. We spend less money, even though we spend a lot of money on content, we spend much less money on content than Jay's side of the business. But Jay's side of the business makes a lot more money believe it or not, than um, my side of the business. So, uh, and I think ours is more complicated. I think Jay's business is more solid um, and, you know, is going to continue. That's going to serve it really well going into the, you know, into the future where the fragility of my business is going to make it more vulnerable to tech. Yeah, the, the games business is not dependent on any individual. Um, the, the, the business of Hollywood is often dependent on an individual. That's um, right. Whether it's a director, a star, or a writer. Or right. a studio. Or, or a television head, president, right? But the game business doesn't operate that way. It's much, much longer arcs, fewer projects, et cetera, et cetera. Jay, so this is also a cleaner business because, uh, you know, I don't know how the infrastructure of like, you know, the analogy of studios to platforms is on his side of the business, but on my side of the business, it's very messy. And it's starting to become more cohesive and siloed and cleaner in that like Netflix wants to do business with Netflix studios. They're not as interested in doing business unless there's a huge star or a big piece of material with like a Warner Brothers or a Sony um, because that they don't, you know, they don't retain the profits the way they ordinarily would. And the same thing with the studios, ABC Studios, ABC Network wants to be in business with their own studio. They'll do business with other studios if the material is desirable, but they prefer, you know, because of profit margins. That is the thing of the, just the last 10 years before it was a, a big cross pollination and really messy. And I hadn't really thought about it until Jay pointed out to me you know, that the linear business is uh, you know, more powerful and speaks to the future. So Jay, on your side, the business, what's the analogy? Well, one of the things I like to sort of point to is uh, if you go back two years and you take this thing called Quibi and you take this thing called TikTok, right? Uh, now TikTok is not classically a game, but it's a game and it's an algorithm based business. We all know what the result is, right? Uh, which is TikTok is today worth $180 billion. And you know, although in trouble with the government, one of the fastest growing tech businesses in the world. And Quibi burned through $2 billion and they closed it down. It's essentially worth nothing because no one signed up for it. And I think those two businesses illustrate Hollywood versus uh, sort of the game business in the new world, right? Quibi was a top-down uh, product in which they had studio executives trying to figure out what the consumer wanted and then making bets and then making everything fit in that model, where TikTok was an algorithm that was fed by the consumer that actually formed the product. And 
I think the, the, the jury is not out on which of those two models are going to be a successful model going forward. It's going to be the TikTok model, which is bottoms up technology driven by um, sort of the consumer, not top down. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, the lesson is that like a 65 year old man, uh, no matter how much experience and success he's had in the business, in the entertainment business on my side, he should not, you know, within himself be determining what, you know, Jay's kids want to be watching by way of content or what kind of platform it should be. Um, and that's what I think happened with Quibi. And, and that, we, that are really nearing, we are nearing the end, but I want to give uh, each of you an opportunity to tell our viewers what you um, fairly briefly about what you see the future of esports in Hollywood to be. Uh, Jay? Um, I think you're going to see a lot more uh, scripted content around technology use. And, and by that, and, I, and I'll be quick, is not technology as a prop, but technology as a storyline. I think you're going to, that'll be the adaptation that will happen in Hollywood, which is moving away from, I have a phone and I'm going to get a text, to the true implications of technology and, and games in people's lives. Okay, and Kim? Yeah, I think the content will look more like what people, more authentic to the lives that people live, just as Jay had said. So the vision for our studio opt-in studios, if you go to opt-in studios, if you go to that website, you'll see the mission of, uh, you know, what we're doing with our company, which we believe is really a path forward for the industry. Well, Jay and Kim, thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> thank you. Pleasure. Our pleasure. Thank you for I having us. Definitely learned a lot. Uh, thank you, our viewers, for joining us today. Uh, next week, my guest will be esports entrepreneur Jordan DeKalb. See you then. Thank you.